r slash ask reddit by reddit and chill. What should we stop teaching young children? That adults are infallible. My wife and I freely admit to our kid if we have done something wrong or were mistaken. And try to teach him to behave the same. He's only 4 so it's hard because he is still learning even the concept of fallibility. But I'm pretty sure it's helping. Roald Dahl would have absolutely liked you. Roald Dahl grew up going through the old fashioned British school system. And he had to encounter plenty of adults who openly insulted kids by constantly accusing them for being untrustworthy. Inherently lazy. Bad and pathetic, while building themselves up as above all that. He had various male teachers like this. It's one of the reasons why he wrote much of the adults, except for Miss Honey, displaying the same behaviors attitudes all over Matilda. It wasn't because he wanted to make Matilda seem misunderstood for being so smart. Much of the negative adult attitudes were literally lifted from what teachers had said to him and his classmates when he was a boy. You could tell that he wanted more adults to be honest. And to treat kids like developing adults that could be taken seriously. That losing is inherently bad and thus failure is unacceptable. Our daughter's age 6-7 t-ball coach pitch softball team refused to let kids get out and also refused to make them use the tee. There were games the coach literally threw balls to the same kid for 15 minutes straight. The coach was scandalized when we insisted our girls take an out after 3 swings and misses. Instead. We teach our kids that the best baseball players fail 2 stroke 3 of the time. To quote MJ. I've missed more than 9000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times. I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. Unhealthy relationships with food. Noticing how our relationship with food is covertly communicated to our children. Labeling food as purely good or bad. Forcing children to eat something they don't want to. Sending the message that vegetables are gross and are only to be enjoyed through bribery. Obviously excluding the instances in which children just don't eat. Forcing children to ignore their own body telling them that they've had enough food by making them finish the too large player of food that you gave them. That asking questions is annoying or unacceptable. I don't know. Let's find out together is the most engaging possible answer you can give a curious child. Look. Intellectually I'm with you 100%. And I sort of enjoy talking through who would win if Wolverine and Deadpool fight. But about an hour later of the same subject or some variant of it. I'm just saying. To be ashamed when they're wrong. People should be thrilled to learn they're wrong because it's an opportunity to learn. Instead we shame politicians who flip flop on issues. Even if they switch their opinions from something like man woman marriage to a stance of gay rights support. But then we wonder why people straight up deny they're wrong even when you pile a mountain of evidence in front of their dumb faces. It's good to admit when you're wrong. But that's not really what flip flopping is. Flip flopping is not changing your beliefs. But changing what you say your beliefs are because it's convenient. They have to keep eating even when they are full. This isn't about picky eaters or whatever. This is about schools forcing kids to eat all of their lunch despite not physically being able to. It's not a healthy mindset. Edit since I see people confused. I've personally had to deal with this policy in different schools in both the USA and in Japan. You've probably never encountered this if your school had a buffet or cafeteria style. This can can cause overeating and then being overweight and can lead to eating disorders. My mother enforced this when we were kids. She would pile our plates ridiculously high for kids then demand we eat it. And we'd have to sit at the table until it was done or we'd have it cold for breakfast the next day. I became overweight and my sister suffered from anorexia and bulimia from this. We still have problems with eating correctly and weight. That they shouldn't ask questions and that adults are always right. I remember growing up and being taught that an adult's words were the truth. And life was so much easier when I discovered that a grown up was just as capable of being full of shit as a child was. Be respectful. But don't blindly accept what's handed to you. Edit. Cleaned up a mistake edit too. Thank you for the silver. Mysterious benefactor. I greatly appreciate it. Man the shittiest part of this is growing up and realizing that your parents. The people you looked up to all your life are morons as well. 
that the teacher will handle any bullies. My school had a no tolerance policy. I was small and timid and got it bad. I relied on the teacher's support for a long time. Until finally one day when for a reason I still don't know to do this day. A kid 2 years older than me jumped on me and put me in a headlock. Saying he hated the way I looked at him. I was relieved when a teacher walked out of the office and broke it up. But then shocked when he let him go and cornered me and asked me what are you doing to provoke them into treating you this way? Never told another teacher ever again and just put up with it. You should never hate anyone in your family. If a certain family member did you wrong. Never repented. Never apologized. Never tried to make things right. Will gladly duck you over again and has done so on multiple occasion. You should be free to detest him as much as you like. But no. Because we are blood related. That somehow completely erases what he's done. 100% agree. Just because they are family. Doesn't mean they aren't bad people and worth your time. If you're bad I'll have the doctor give you a shot. If you don't stop misbehaving. The cops will come arrest you. That ugly equals bad evil. I partially blame TV animation for this one though. Old. Ugly. Fat or serious looking people are almost always the villains. This often makes kids fear elderly people and make unfair connections between appearance and personality. And it's not just kids animation. I see this shit everywhere. That children should always do what they're told. If they're uncomfortable. Or scared. Or truly believe what they're being asked to do is wrong they should be taught it's okay to stick up for themselves. My take on this that children should always think about what they have been told. And whether they should do it. The key word here is thinking. And accepting reasoning instead of authority. Don't take no for answer. Actually. This can have severe consequences down the road. I'm trying to teach my 4 year old son that he sometimes won't get what he wants. And that he has to accept that. How do the parents who teach their kids not to take no for an answer ever get their kids to go to bed? Making little kids kiss for a cute picture. Along the same lines. Telling preschoolers that so and so is their boyfriend girlfriend. Can't they just enjoy the single life at least till they can spell their own name? Finish your plate encourages kids to eat past the point of full. On here family eat in all you can eat style. So the rice and side dishes are on the middle of the table and you take it as you need it. On this case finish your plate is still good cause it teach the kids to only take food as needed and not stuffing everything into their plates. We should stop comparing them to other children which is basically telling them they are not good enough. When they compare you to other kids. But when you compare yourself to other kids they say but I don't care about them. I care about you. Why do you bring them up then? That genitals are rude and we shouldn't speak about them. They are private but they aren't rude. We need to teach children correct names for body parts including genitals. On average a child discloses sexual abuse 5 times before action is taken. It's very easy to hear he touched my flower and not think too much into it. Also. Getting children to be able to verbalize feeling uncomfortable and learning how they feel when they are uncomfortable can be beneficial in stopping grooming in its tracks. Groomers often start with lingering touches that can be easily explained away. But if the child can articulate how the touch made them feel it can help adults to protect children. I worked in a child daycare center and a co-worker told on me to a supervisor for saying the word penis around some kids. Luckily the supervisor agreed with me that penis is not a dirty word. To mock off brand or value items that others may use or wear. Edit. For people that keep commenting that this isn't a thing. Just read the comments lmao. There's tons of people who have experienced this. For those saying no one would teach their kids this. The whole reason I'm posting this is because I have seen my own family. And friends family do this. It isn't okay. Unless you're the brand champion. All that mocking must have toughened them up. Because look at them now. Just ignore them and they will stop. Sometimes that's the answer. Sometimes it's disastrous. The real answer is don't give the bully what they want. So what to do depends on what the bully is trying to get out of you. If the bully is trying to get a reaction. Or make you visibly feel hurt so that they can feel like they have emotional power over you. Then ignoring them can deny them that and could work. 
if they're trying to feel powerful by creating a situation where they're dominant and you're submissive. Or where they get to toy with you with impunity. Then being passive instead of fighting back would worsen it. In general. Don't reward behavior you want less of. So that means understanding what the bully considers a reward. What to think instead of how to think. Edit. Thanks for the gold internet person. Are you telling me the droning mass of people all spouting the same boring messages as the last isn't the symbol of a successful society? Well duck. I don't know how many schools do this. But I know it happened to me in both primary and high school. And multiple other people I've spoken to about this who live in my state have said this as well. NSW. Oss, but there's something called resilience training where they gather bullied kids and tell us that the way to prevent being bullied is to stop making ourselves a target. Telling us that we have to try harder to fit in. And how ignoring a bully will make them give up rather than crying or running away. It doesn't help. It just made me. And probably other kids too. Feel like more of an outcast and put it in my head that I got bullied because I deserved it. I still don't understand why schools try to fix the victims rather than confront the bullies. If someone's getting beaten up for no reason. I don't think they're the problem. Telling them not to cry. I got bullied a lot in elementary school and instead of helping me, the teachers would scream at me for crying. Which just made me cry even more and create a perpetual cycle of screaming and crying. And that ducked me up for life. Stranger danger. We need to let them know that it's not just strangers that can hurt them. And there may be times when they need a stranger's help. They need to know that if we get separated at the zoo or mall that they can rely on strangers to help them find me. We discuss how to tell who works wherever we are. Lifeguards at the pool. Employees at the mall. ETC. Uniforms. Name tags. And how to get help. Most people in the world are good. I don't want them terrified that every person there is some budgieman. That they're at school to study not make friends. Friendships are important at any stage of life and you will definitely benefit from having connections in adulthood. One of the reasons kids didn't like me at school. My parents always expected me to be the best. Saying that studying is my only responsibility now. Today. Nobody cares about my grades from 10 years ago. That college is necessary for success. It's not required. It could be depending on what career they want. And I know not every school does this. But since I was little I was told that the more school you get the more money you're worth. Wikipedia can never be trusted. Generally the information on it is very accurate although it is a good idea to use other sources to confirm it. Although that's true for everything. My teachers always say that I shouldn't use Wikipedia. Instead I should use any other website on the internet. Because. As we all know. Literally any website can be trusted. S. Flattery will get you nowhere. In the real world it usually helps get you places. So go ahead and let little kids learn that sucking up works. Ferengi rule of acquisition number 33. It never hurts to suck up to the boss. We should stop teaching that obedience is a virtue. Disobedience isn't a virtue. Either. We should be teaching critical thinking. Instead of obedience to authorities. Good things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. Life is fair. My philosophy professor first day says karma isn't real. Right now a human trafficker or drug dealer just bought a BMW i8 and a girl scout just got hit by a car. I was like well damn. Edit. Can't respond to everyone but I appreciate the views on what karma actually is or isn't. You should know you have 1.5 million. Not that karma guys. That if a boy hits a girl. Or if a girl hits a boy. That means they like the other gender. Abuse should not be loved. If I see a guy I think is hot. Should I throw a rock? We should stop teaching kids that cereal is part of a balanced breakfast. Right. I can enjoy my cereal anytime I damn well want to. That sharing is caring. I mean that with context. Of course sharing would be polite and should be considered but just because you ask doesn't mean I have to give you anything. Especially to strangers. Kids just walk off with things and parents don't even ask where they got these items half the time. I used to be a nanny. 
they hurt you? That means they like you. You know in my humble personal opinion. I think it means the exact duckying opposite. If young children don't like someone or something, they make it very clear. Any person with a grain of common sense shouldn't mistake harassments for affection. Not from personal experience. But god I hate this trope in TV shows that I used to watch. Ducking like and subscribe.